Hi Fencers! Today I'm going to be talking about Ottawa Swordplay's Skirmish and Assault rule set for competitive fencing. We use this for our in-house ladder matches and for tournaments. Since 2017, Ottawa Swordplay has hosted our Points North tournament on the first weekend in August. But due to the pandemic, we've indefinitely postponed our 2020 event. But since we're in the mood for some tournament content, for the month of August, we'll be sharing some videos from our last tournament in 2019, where we used this Skirmish and Assault rule set. This video is a quick introduction to those rules. I'm going to talk briefly about the objectives behind these rules. I'm going to talk about what makes a valid hit, dive into how the matches progress through phases, and finally talk about scoring and faults. If you check out the video description, there's a link there to our full written rules. The Skirmish and Assault rule set was developed by our lead instructor, Craig Shackleton, and then it was refined through testing by Ottawa Swordplay students and instructors. We first used it in a tournament as the rule set for our 2018 Immortals Longsword Bracket for fencers age 40 plus, and then rolled it out for all matches at our 2019 Longsword Tournament. All rule sets are approximations. We are approximating a sword fight, and we use rules to do it safely, and to be able to assign a score to the bout. All rule sets will also encourage certain kinds of actions and discourage others. Fighting under various rule sets is a really good way to practice and keep from getting stuck into one set of strategies and tactics. The objective we had in developing the skirmish and assault rules was to create a set of rules that would allow us to have continuous fencing so that we are not always stopping and resetting after each hit. This rule set encourages fencers to be able to fight defensively, and it rewards fencers who can keep themselves safe while scoring hits against an opponent, even an opponent who may be disregarding their own safety in order to get a hit. We've found this to be an interesting and fun rule set to fight under. It is fairly easy to judge, and it generally results in low-scoring matches that are fun to watch. Hits are categorized as a clean hit, a double hit, or they can be thrown out by the referee as no score. A clean hit is when one combatant hits the other without being hit within the same beat of fencing time. A double hit is when both combatants are hit within the same beat of fencing time. The measure of fencing time is based on the timing of the actions involved. If fencer A hits fencer B, and then fencer B starts a new action and hits fencer A, they are not in the same beat of fencing time. If fencer A hits fencer B, while fencer B is already in action, and that action hits fencer A, then they are within the same beat of fencing time, and that would be a double hit. A referee can also throw out hits if the action is unclear. All targets are valid under this rule set, and it is important to note that there is no such thing as too light when it comes to a hit. Any action that contacts a fencer with the edge or point of the sword is counted as a hit. A referee may throw out a hit if they rule that there was no intent on contact, but that is not based on the force of the hit or the distance that the sword has traveled. A combatant may also declare that they had no intent on a hit that they scored, but not on a hit scored against them. If a combatant touches the floor with any part of their body other than their feet, or if they put one foot outside the ring, they are considered to have been hit, regardless of whether or not it was the result of their opponent's action. That brings me to a word about the fighting space. The ring we use is a large rectangle, and it can be various sizes, although the one in the photo here is just under 30 feet long. At our sword hall, we have two of these rings taped out on the floor, and we can also expand to use both rings together as a larger fighting space. But you can use this rule set in almost any size of fighting ring. Each fencer begins in their end zone. Our school colors are red and gold, so we use red fencer and gold fencer to identify each combatant. 
There are two types of phases in a match, skirmish phase and assault phase. We begin with a skirmish phase. Skirmish phases are fought to one clean hit and are used to determine who will be the striker in the assault phase. Once one fencer gets a clean hit, they become the striker and we move to the assault phase. It's a bit like rallying for the serve in tennis or volleyball. Assault phases are continuous fighting, but only the fencer who is the striker can score points. The other fencer is defending and trying to end the assault phase by getting a hit on the striker. The striker can earn up to five points by getting clean hits, but the assault ends as soon as the striker is hit. If that's a double hit, or if the striker has earned five points, we return to the skirmish phase and fight to see who is striker in the next assault. If the defender gets a clean hit, then they have earned the role of striker, and we go directly to the next assault phase. This back and forth continues until we've done three assault phases. Then we have the redemption round. It's like an assault round, but the striker is whichever fencer has the lowest score. The striker can earn as many points as would put them even with their opponent. So for example, if the scores were at 4 to 1 going into the redemption round, the maximum number of points that could be earned in that round is 3 to bring the match to a tie. If the score is already tied, we go over the redemption round and go directly to our final battle. To resolve a match with a tied score, we use the final battle as a sudden death round to determine the winner. Whoever gets a clean hit first scores a point and wins the match. Points are only scored when the striker hits the defender in an assault phase. The judges count hits as they happen in the continuous action and watch for the defender to hit the striker and end the phase. Judges will also stop the action and have fencers reset if one fencer touches the ground with anything other than their feet or if they step out of the ring. Judges are also watching for double hits. Double hits in a skirmish phase count as a fault. In the 2019 tournament, Three faults in a single skirmish phase ends the match as a double loss, and faults were not carried between skirmish phases. This rule will change slightly for future tournaments, and faults will be limited to five carried across all skirmish phases. Double hits in an assault phase do not count as faults, but they do end the striker's assault. I hope you found that overview of our skirmish and assault rules helpful. Check out the written rules for some further details, including precedence of hits that happen simultaneously. We'll be sharing videos from the 2019 Points North Tournament throughout this August, so come back to see the rules in action.